Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hadeen, and this week we have our guest, Marquise Wright of Mr. Wright Flooring, and we will let him get to introducing himself in just a minute here. Hopefully, I've got all the technology bugs worked out, and um, I know you guys should be able to hear me. We'll hopefully be able to hear Marquise this time, but first... The Floor Academy podcast is sponsored by Trilama, the trade labor marketplace, where businesses can find skilled trade labor, such as flooring installers, and where installers and other skilled tradespeople can find permanent or project work. You can set up your profile at Trilama.com, T-R-A-L-A-M-A.com, or download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And remember, Trilama is always free for skilled tradespeople. Trilama has been a a great sponsor um so marquis you are here uh we're going to talk a little bit about your past how that has affected you starting your business what it's kind of brought to the table for you and where you you see yourself going and where your your business is going so why don't you start off give me that uh give me that quick you know couple minute background story of who you are how you got started um, yeah, how you got into working on your own and then we'll, we'll dive a little deeper. So I'm um, Marquise Wright and, um, started Mr. Wright flooring in 2012, uh, September 26th. And, um, I got into flooring through uh, a friend. It was, he started, it was a neighbor and, um, he offered me 75 bucks a day for installs. And I was like, I was with it, you know, right out of high school. That side in seventy five bucks a day. Oh, <laughs> oh, would you work for that now? Not a chance, man. But no, you know what? I can't say that either because I have. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, some days I, you show up, you think you're working for free. <laughs> that I yeah, I know that feeling. Um, I mean, would you uh, seventy five dollars, man? When what year was that? <laughs> that was in two thousand nine. Yeah. Okay, so that's when I graduated school. Uh, when did I start? I started 2015. I got 110 a day when I started in 2015. So oh, man. a little, you know, add a little bit of inflation. We might be right around the same same rate there. Mm-hmm. Man. All right. Um, what you? I don't. Let's we'll we'll get into how how you got to like making seventy five dollars a day. Let's let's go back though. <laughs> It's fun. Give me, give me like the background, like the early life, right? Like you, you know, you were raised by a single mom. Um, so I, I, like me, you probably, if you wanted something, you were, you had to go get it on your own. It, it wasn't going to be handed to you, right? Like you had to earn it. If I wanted to get a super Nintendo, I had to go work and get a super Nintendo. I didn't, I, I waited and got a N64 or something or, you know, a, playstation 2 but like if if i wanted something i was out like hustling finding a way to you know make some money so let's give me give me a little bit of the background story here i I wanted to work since the age of five when i knew you how do you make money you know that's what i would start asking everybody how do you make money you know and they'll be like well how do you get rich that's what the question um end up going into and um you know, mom struggled. So, you know, I wanted to have something and just in case if she didn't have, I wanted to make sure that I had. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would cut my grandparents grass, do yard work around them over the weekends with a cousin. And, um, that was for me to have lunch money in school and, you know, be able to do some things. But my first job I had, uh, with McDonald's, I worked for McDonald's for a full year. And um, I was still in high school. And um, when I realized that after a year, I had trained all of their employees and I was making less than everybody. I was like, um, we, we moved to a different side of town. And I was mm-hmm. just like, I'm not working at McDonald's anymore. And um, I, I have an uncle who um, used to host uh, crap games. And um, we eventually he invited me over to watch a game and I made like 50 bucks and, you know, an hour and uh, Mm -hmm. he let me keep the money. And I was just like, man, I just made 50 bucks an hour. 
And that led to me pulling in about $700 a week in high school. <laughs> Running dice games. And, and, and then you moved into poker, right? We, we've kind of, we talked a little yeah. bit. So yeah, a, a year after, well, right after high school, um, the neighborhood got hip to Texas Hold'em. And, you know, so everybody's playing Texas Hold'em from sun up to sundown. <laughs> Oh man, I can only imagine. Like you're just <laughs> running dice games, like I, I, on the on the on the street corner in front of the school in the bathroom at school. Like was it was it anywhere anytime or like what what were you doing? It, you know, it's funny. So it's uh so in the neighborhood, you know, you have you have spots that's known for you know what they do, and this spot was known for gambling, and you know. Everybody, you know, no one had jobs, but they made a lot of money and they came and played poker. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I I wanted. It's too funny, just running dice games, man. Um, and now look at you, like legit businessman, being recognized by industry organizations. What <laughs> know, a <right>? like, <laughs> what a flop. What a like, just a change. Okay. Yeah. I I mean, all right, so you're doing that like do you ever get you ever get in trouble for it or you get busted and and broke up and do any time or anything like that no um you know it was well known you know that what was being done there you know it was just known for gambling and police isn't gonna lock you up for a day for gambling you know mm -hmm. okay um so how do you, I mean, where does that, where does that go? Did you know that was so like the, uh, um... I was, uh, I was installing floors on the side just to say that I had a job and it was like 75 bucks a day. I, I really didn't take advantage of what I had until I realized that, you know, one year it was like, Hey, you know, you can really make a lot of money in the flooring industry. And uh, when I realized that you can make $200,000 uh, a year legally, you know, I was like, well, I spent all my time learning uh, poker. I kind of got exhausted with it, dealing with the same guys and stuff. And um, I, I, I was looking for a change. And um, I ran into Earl, which was a, a, which is a mentor of mine. And um, I just completely went left field focused straight on floors. Okay, so I there there's a lot there. Like you you were doing flooring on the side, making a little bit of money just so you had like a legit income to show on paper and whatnot. So good for you. That's that's smart. Um but where does the two hundred thousand dollars come in? Was that the guy that you were working with on the weekends was was doing that? Like and, and right, how was right. he how was he doing that, right? Like where'd you even find out like this this cat was making two hundred thousand? Oh man, you know, I, I was uh you know, like to learn stuff. So once I started learning, okay, looking up companies and, you know, I would take the instructions from the, from the boxes of floors and I read them when I go home and I would just look up the different companies. And that's one day it thought to look up the company I was working for. Like, Oh, this dude makes 200 grand a year. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. uh, so it happened like that. Okay. And so, I mean, once you see that, then that was more interesting than trying to run a a dice game or a poker game. And, and you really like, if I can do this legally, even though it's hard work, it's going to be more rewarding. Right, right. You know, I said, um, if I spent my time learning how to make thousands, I can spend my time learning how to make millions. And um, I would just follow the, the big companies, just kind of like study them. Okay. So what was the, what was the goal at that point? Because I, we both know like as a, as a one man crew by yourself, you're probably not going to do 200,000 a year. Like it, it's oh, just first, like you can't get enough. So what was the plan that you were putting together at that point of how you were going to get to be the guy that makes 200, 500, a million, couple million a year? So I had spent time teaching my cousins um, how to, how to, run the gambling business and over time I was just like you know it was such a negative route I just wanted to make up for it so I offered the guy who trained me I said hey 
um, could you train my family members and we take over and do your jobs? And uh, he says, I'm not taking food out of my kid's mouth. And if you want to, you want to quit, put in your two weeks notice. So um, later on that day, I said, hey, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. And how much experience did you have at this point? Uh, maybe three and a half years of experience. Okay. I mean, so like a, a, a good amount to you've encountered situations and, and you've you you have enough experience that going out on your own you're not necessarily going to be thrown for a loop we all get thrown for a loop once in a while just because there's situations you run into once every 20 years but it wasn't like you you didn't do the standard like i learned how to do floating floors in six months like i'm gonna go start my own company now right right no 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 i was loyal 100 percent. like wanted to you know hey let me take on your jobs for you you know and okay. um yeah, I made sure I didn't want to step on any toes, but I did feel like, a, you know, I felt like I was a good enough installer to be able to take on and cover some jobs for him. Okay, so he says that he'll replace you and you got to go form your own crews and find your own work. So where were you? Did you go? Did he say you could go talk to the store that he was getting work sub to him from or did you have to start finding your own work? I didn't want to do that. So he was... um working through a company that was getting work through Lowe's. So he was a sub and um, I, I, I didn't want to go that route. I didn't know Lowe's had a company either that I could do that with. And um, I actually, I packed up and went to Fort Lauderdale to try and um, pursue it there. So my mom lived out in Fort Lauderdale. So I moved with her and tried to pursue my foreign career there. Okay. So I, did you just start, what, what'd you do? Like I, I started and, oh. you know, I, I was taking pictures of projects and stuff and I I've used Facebook and community groups to build my business. So like how, how'd you put yourself out there to even find the work? Well, I did that and, um, put myself on Facebook and, um, of course all my Facebook friends was here in Jacksonville mm -hmm. and, um, I'm in Fort Lauderdale now. So the only thing I could do was look up all the flooring companies around and knock on every door asking for work. And, um, I was at the time I was only requesting for 200 bucks a day. And, <laughs> and, uh, eventually I knocked on enough doors until a guy said, Hey, if you show me you're worth 200 bucks a day, I'll pay you 200 bucks worth, uh, 200 bucks a day. So, okay. so I did you get that. Go ahead. Uh, after um, working with this guy named Steve, um, <laughs> Steve was a crook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, and, I mean, uh, hey, hey come, dude, look, you're running craps games, bro. Like, you can't, don't judge people now. <laughs> hey, you know, all hands off to Steve. You know, I, le I learned a lot. I was able to work. Um, Steve ended up getting into a bad car accident. And um, I said, hey, well, we can't work can I take on your jobs for you? He let me do one job for him. And um, I charged, you know, job paid out maybe 700 bucks. I charged him 400 bucks, actually 360. And um, he said, uh, he never used me again. I, I, okay, man, I, <laughs> how are you going to take half the money? And you didn't like, I, it's I get it. It's his reputation. It's his license, probably. But you're using your tools, most likely. I don't do the subbing game is hard, man. I just I never <laughs> I can't figure it out. And I've never done it. I, I, well, OK, I did it once. I, I, I just I can't figure that thing out. I'm not willing to give up. Get out of my pie, man. That, that's my pie. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. so, all right. So he doesn't use you anymore. And you're you called up companies. You were asking for 200 a day. So, I mean, you were getting that, but where's, how did you go about actually starting up your, your own thing? Right. Cause at this point you're like these days you're selling all your own work, right? You're not subbing. Uh, no, no, no. I still, I still go through the subs, but I get okay. to negotiate my prices now with the stores around the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still sell my own jobs also. Okay. So I'm just like all in the mix. You As long as you're staying busy. And then how many people do you have now? Because you've hired all family, which I think is very cool. 
Right, right. So um, we have four consistent family members and um, three different sub teams I use. Okay. Man, you're keeping a lot of people busy. Because okay. that, that, I'm, I'm assuming you, if you got four family members, right, and then three sub crews, there's probably two people on each of those crews. So there's six. Right, you got like right. ten people, ten people in you. Right, and they kind of use me for fill in. You know. Okay. Um, I mean, how's that? How has your upbringing played a, a role in in you becoming a business owner? Right, because you you went from I have to learn to. I now have these skills I need to teach to other people. And so I, I, I'm, I got to assume that the like, man, mom needs help and, and no one else is going to do it. Like that attitude had to kick in and you were just like, I can't be beaten. Like you, you watched your mom not get beat and then you didn't want to get beaten. And so I, I got to assume that there's just a never ending tenacity behind you. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, growing up, I just always wanted to have something and uh, like, you know, favorite cartoon, you know, I, I admire Scrooge McDuck, you know. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Little DuckTales. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, I just, I knew I wanted to be like a lot of the family members would look up to me as um, a young kid and tell me, you're going to be rich one day, you're going to be wealthy. And eventually, like when adults start telling the kid that you you would believe it, you know, mm -hmm. feel like you have to live up to those standards to a certain extent. And um, okay. when I got around to the gambling thing, you know, I'm, I'm around uh, a lot of successful guys and, you know, eventually, you know, they talk and they talk business and, you know, eventually, you know, I took notes and mental notes from that. Cause a lot of these guys were older than me, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I just, um, held on to a lot of the things that I learned from them. Like, even when it came to looking at growing the, growing the gambling business, I wanted to see it prosper. I made sure that money was generating through that. And, um, you know, I, I realized I had a niche for, you know, circulating the money. Okay. I, so, I mean, you kind of, you were paying attention to how things come in, how things go out, making sure you, you're learning how to set money aside and, and things like that. And you're not getting caught up behind an eight ball and, and in debt. It sounds right. like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I, where's, where's all this knowledge come into play now? Like how is, how has the, you know, like back streets and, and alleyways played a, played a role in, in forming this business, right? Because there's, there's, there's two ways to go about it, man. You can, you can get the book smarts and you can get, you can get street smarts and some people have a combination of both, but <clears throat> I, it seems like you've definitely applied a, a more street smart mentality to this. Not that you're probably not out reading books and stuff today, but even me at first, it was, Look, I got busted for selling weed and I'm a convicted felon with a class four felony because of it. But, you know, I took what I learned running that business and businesses out of my locker as a kid and stuff at school. And like I understood the numbers enough to be able to put myself in the position I'm in now. And then I and then sure. I finally woke up and I was like, oh, I should probably read like actual books from business people that are really, really successful instead of, you know, me that thinks I'm doing good just because I make a hundred thousand dollars a year now. Like there's, there's more to get out there, but you're not going to get it with, it, you have to level up still, right? Like you got to put in the work. So right. how is all of that like played out for you? So, um, <clears throat> for one, I like, I, I had, uh, admired, uh, physical labor, but I also knew that you know, I, if I could make money with physical labor, I also knew that, you know, you make money just on having product and um, rather that looks like uh, work sources. So I, I look like so when I'm um, networking, I'm networking for future work. And mm -hmm. that's what I where I took that approach. Like, OK, so when I'm speaking to a, another company and I'm more so ne negotiating a deal for next year 
as opposed to let me have it right now. And um, that was one of the things that I took with me was like, okay, well, um, I had a brother that said, hey, you know, for everything you miss, you you make up. And, you know, I, it was like, um, if I missed the job, I knew that I was going to get another job. And I think a lot of that was like the mental approach to it was mm -hmm. like, I know I'm not going to let up. I know it's going to come to me. And I, I think like that kind of allowed opportunities to come to me. And um, one, one thing I, I would say like customer service where I, pr I took pride in customer service. And um, when you're dealing with a lot of angry gamblers and a lot of times they're drunk, you kind of like you learn how to manage them. Um, a lot of times the customers that I deal with, they're, they're on no type of level worse than these guys here that I dealt with. So it was like um, when I enter them, I'm just like, hey, just calming them down. You know, when you're a subcontractor, you mm -hmm. got all these different hands in the pot. Customers are upset by the time they get to you. And, um, you know, after dealing with uh, people and dealing with sober people, you know, it's a lot easier dealing with sober people. So that's what I look at. I took from it, man. That's that. That's an interesting insight. Is that you? You were growing up being, you know, not even out of high school, having to deal with just drunk people acting like complete idiots, and then you add money into the mix, and things can turn sideways really quick in that situation. So, if if you're being able to calm people down and work through situations like that, then when a client's upset, that you know there's a hump in their floor and you got to grind it down. And why didn't you see this before? That's, that's definitely much easier to deal with and work through. I'm sure like that, that's, there's not nearly as much pressure. I would, I would think. Right. It, it was, it made it easy to have the hard conversations, even when it came to, Hey, I'm going to have to charge you a little more for floor prep. Hey, I'm getting paid to do this. This is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. You know? And if you don't like it, I just walk away and get paid for what I did. I, Got another job tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. That's the best attitude, man. I, I don't think there's enough guys that will be willing to, well, guys and gals, um, that that would be willing to walk away and, and say, look, this is the way it needs to be done. So let's hit specs so I can put a warranty on this floor. Right. It, it, did you have right. any of that early on or have you always kind of like stood your ground and been like, this is what the specs say. This is how we're going to do it. If we're not going to do it, then I'm out of here. Cause I'm, I'm like you, right? Like, man, the phone may not ring a lot, but it rings enough that it, it keeps me busy enough. And I don't have to take, just because you want a floor, I don't have to do it. In fact, I'm, dealing with a lady that was referred to me by a, a client that's used me multiple times and, and she's texting back and forth with me today. And she says she wants LVP and I, I give her like a price point and she's like, ah, you know, I'm really trying to stay around like two. And I was like, it's like four to five bucks, right? I'm trying to get a quality mm -hmm. product sold. And so she comes back and she, I, she, I was like, if you're looking at stuff, let me know. So she sends me a product from, from home Depot. That's a, that's a laminate. And then she sends me a product from Costco that's a three eighths inch engineered wood. Well, neither one of those are vinyl planks, and both of the products were pretty much garbage. So, Easy. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to touch either one of those. And I'm just like, I, you know, I told her, I was like, look, I'll install other products, but I'm going to be picky about what I, I do. And I've, I've worked into that as I've educated myself more on how the industry works. So I'm wondering if that was kind of the same path or you just kind of always knew like, nah, man, it, it doesn't like, I'm just, I'm out of here. I'm not dealing with this and, and moving on. So um, when I first started installing, I learned how to install the improper way. So the, the moment, like uh, the guy who uh, trained me, we're still good friends today. He uh, ended up installing the proper way. And it was like, Oh, you switched the game up on us. Well, I like this better because if it's by the books, it's the way it's supposed to be done. I wanted to learn that way. Like I was, mm -hmm. that's why I'm reading the directions and taking them home. You know, I want to, I want to install how the manufacturers say it's supposed to be installed. And um, when it came to me getting my own contract through um, 
through the company who subbed me out through Lowe's. I, w- I was working to be the best installer for Lowe's. So when it came to that, I just didn't want anybody to come back and say that, that this job failed. So I, and then mm-hmm. I start hearing about people get inspections done. Well, they were using me to do the inspections. I fixed a lot of mistakes. And um, I, I just didn't want to repeat those same mistakes because it costs you money to go back to jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I only got time to make money the first time, not not go back right. for free the second time and and do it. I, I mean, I, I charge enough to be able to go back, but I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, where's the... Uh... What else has come into play? Like, how has the I don't know. Just where, where's the you know? You didn't get a standard. I mean, you went to school. You got the standard education, but you were getting more than that. So, how else has that really like played a role? Do you think in, in the what you've you've built and how you've built it? Um. Well, I say I had like, um, I've always had like people who were into business around me, like mm-hmm. uh, my grandfather, he was uh, business oriented, you know, he had uh, his own um, um, delivery service and his cooking business. And um, <clears throat> I seen that as a kid growing up, but then he eventually transferred into driving trucks. So just just to be able to see it, it was possible was like that's all I needed. I just needed something to mimic, like a model to mimic. And um, like if I if I can see a structure, then I can put it I can put it to place. Um, I can apply it. So um, okay. even when it came to how I was doing this uh, with um, poker. You know, I, I had a, uh, we, at the poker games, there was a guy there. He would play this game on his phone called Crime City. And eventually I was like, let me take this game out. And then I, I ended up downloading this game and I started playing it. And then I was just like, okay, okay. So you really got to be making money off the poker and the craps. Okay. In order to make some, actually have flow coming in. So, you know, when, when you take that aspect into the flooring industry, you know, it was like, okay, well, I need to start um, selling some material on these jobs so I can make some more money in that mm-hmm. in that aspect. And then it referred, like it went into, okay, well, let me calculate the average installer pay, which was at the time is $50,000 per year. So I say, okay, so I can make 50000 per year per person. So I need to train enough people. And then I put together some plan of if I can train four people per year, I can bring in an extra hundred thousand dollars a year and i gotta realize that i'm gonna go through installers also so i really need to train about seven installers a year and uh that'll give me that extra hundred thousand dollars that i need to push out you know there's some flaws to the plan but it's a good concept i uh, well there's just uh, that's that's amazing because there's not a lot of guys thinking that way they just they they look like oh I'm busy like I need to bring somebody on well I don't know what to pay I'm like I'll here's X amount of dollars right like you were really looking at the numbers and and sense of it and trying to to figure it out and you were looking at okay I I was the same way I was like man I I go and install this stuff but I don't make any money on material I was like how do I get material where do I go and I started to look in and and finding the places to talk to and being mm-hmm. able to sell it you know I one of the so, you know, I think a lot of people know ProSource and yeah. look, their their programs get great, right? Like if you can't get material in your area and you can set up an account with ProSource and at least get 10%, I'm all for it. Right. I can get more than 10% on most of the stuff I do because I can actually buy the material and sell it at, at a higher margin than what, you know, I get a better price. So I get more money out of it than the 10% that. Pro source is willing to give me. So, you know, my rep over there is always calling me and, and she's like, Hey, you, you don't send me any work. Like, come on, send some people over. And I'm like, I've told you, I, I can get my own material. I'm always going to go that route first. So mm-hmm. how, how have you set up your deals? Cause I have some stores that I can go and talk to as well. And, and, you know, they'll do the, do me the favor of like, I'll make the phone call, but I'm going to put 25 cents a square foot on it or whatever. Right. But then I can still get another, 
dollar twenty five out of it or or something like that. So how have you set up your right. your deals? So um, <clears throat> I I work with ProSource also. I work with them for a bit, and um, you know I had some uh, a friend out there in Floor Trade I had worked with for a few years. We've been working together about maybe about six years. And um, he would give me a deal on his floor. Also, you know, I have a friend who, um, when the times got a little hard, you know, we kind of like picked up on each other. And, you know, we kind of just like, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, you know, on the floor and installation thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a few relationships like that. Okay. You don't get any stuff directly from any distributors or anything in your area? No, no, no. Mm. Okay. Uh, is, is a store in your future? Is that like the next move for you to get off the floor and, and leave the family and find more people to install and you start selling, focusing on selling and, and running a store or what's, what's kind of the plan here? So, um, there's a, a store I've been working for and the owner recently just offered the store to me if I was able to come up with the funds to purchase the store. So it, it's always been there. Um, so I've been thinking about that route and actually been meeting up and, you know, trying to figure out what all it takes in order for me to go through that process. Okay. I, man, that'd be a big step. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, that's always kind of been in, in the, in the back of your head though. That was like the next step is like, let me get some people working and, and moving and then I can transition over. Right. Well, the, the whole thing, it's just been like, how do I just blow this up? You know, um, that's always been the main goal was, OK, how do you build an empire, you know, that's going to last? And if, you know, I keep building, hopefully, you know, um, the generation after me, I keep building also. We just mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. I mean, how like I, I was. Go ahead. I, well, I was going to say, like, how, how big do you want it, right? Like, what what what's an empire to you? <clears throat> Something that doesn't stop growing. You know, it, it takes in developing the children's minds and um, the, the family's minds, and um, which is why I invest in them. It's because it's like we're all in this together, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just needs somebody to, to drive the ship. And, okay. you know, so after me is the like, uh, so I have a family and I used to be upset with um, the family my family was adopted into, my great grandfather. And I was upset with him because he had built this um, concrete empire. He was a general contractor and, and, you know, he was well known in the area for what he built in, in uh, Sweetwater. And um, I held a grudge with him after I did a school project on him. <clears throat> and um, when I did a school project, I realized that I didn't know that industry. And I was upset about it because he died before he could teach me about it. And I was like, I held a grudge with him for years. I, I would think recently I let that go. And it was at the point where it was just like, you know what, I have to invest enough education in the people around me so I don't carry that with me. You know, I don't leave without educating the people around me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me let me think on that for a second. That's deep. I, I it's it's interesting to get into like holding grudges, especially when the thing doesn't exist anymore, right? And you're like you're upset about it but then you're you're taking that info and you're turning it but give me give me one second here all right what's the hardest part of starting and growing a flooring business getting clients if you're serious about having your business oh oh man see look at this this is why we shouldn't do ads live uh if you're serious about taking your business to the next level you need a marketing partner like traffic digital Traffic is a full-service marketing agency that works with flooring companies all across the country. They'll help you get a continuous stream of customers using the most modern online marketing techniques. So visit www.trafficdigital.com today to sign up for a free marketing analysis. Don't forget, traffic is with a K. 
All right. Thank you, uh, Marquis. So, I mean, it, it seems like a a waste of energy to hold a grudge, <clears throat> but I know that I hold a lot of them myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and there's probably a bunch that I could go sit on a couch and talk about and, and let go and move forward in life. So did that, did that give you a drive? Is that where some of this comes from of that? Like you, you could have had access to this thing, but it, it didn't exist anymore. And now you're like, I need to set this up for my own family. It's so many things that, that you just like, we're meaning making machines and I just would make anything mean something to give me an extra boost. You know, mm -hmm. like, cause it, this this journey hasn't been an easy one and a lot of days you feel like giving up so you just like nitpicking for stuff to keep you going okay i i, I mean what will ex dive deeper on that so i mean you're nitpicking on, on things to keep you going so what is what is it that you you need to to keep you going is it you know I, I know for me this year, like I've been super frustrated and I have like no passion <clears throat> left to go and install floors. And I, I've recently like I did a set of stairs and an upstairs here. And I was like, it was the first time in like six months that I actually felt good about being on a project and, and doing it. So what are you trying to get at? Like what's happening? So I, I would say it's a. Uh a lot of emotion is happening like you know building a business is you know you you they say in business you hold back emotions you know to, to handle business and um in this aspect i'm using emotion to display uh, i mean i'm using business to display my emotions you know so rather it's uh i can use angry uh emotion to drive me to to work hard, use sadness, you know, like um, at family members that had begged me for a job and I not been in the position to give them a job and they lost their lives, you know, and you, you hold that mm -hmm. guilt and that sadness, mm -hmm. you know, drives you to keep going. You know, like I said, we're meaning making machines. I'll take anything and make it mean something to make me keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, and when is, I mean, is there, is enough enough? Is there a, like you said, you know, you want it to keep going and building, but is, is enough enough at some point? Like you seem, you know, I, I've met you in person. We hung out at surfaces this, this past June and, and you're, you're really down to earth. Like, you, you know, you're calm, collected, not like anxious, you know? And, and so the way you're describing what you want, it sounds like you can't, your thirst can't be sated. So, but when I, I, you know, sitting here, you're, you're, you know, totally content and happy. So can't, is that, uh, like projection or are you, oh, if, if everything stopped front. right now, like you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you'd be okay. No, this is all a front, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, and just put on a show like you know this is what i gotta be in order to be this businessman you know like i say suppress the, those emotions i let them display through my work hmm. okay so i well that's interesting so you get a you get to go beat a, a tapping block and and take your or you know rip some out rip out some floor you can get your <laughs> yeah, frustration man. out and you know, you get to install the floor and it can make you happy and, and be satisfied. It's usually a very rewarding process. So, right. Okay. So that's one of those places where you do feel rewarded after you do that job, you know, and uh, when you get those challenging customers and you uh, soothe them over and, you know, before you know it, they're crying, you know, they're like, okay, you get to express that emotion that, I want to express, but I'm letting it come through you, you know, mm -hmm. put your life into it. Has there, has there been a point where you've, you've wanted to shut down or you have shut down and, and you've stopped or slowed down or have you, has this drive just been constant, especially because you have 
people that you've taken their livelihood into your hands? I would say it's always been that drive, but this this was the one of those years where I had shut down. You know, um, it's been a lot going on this year. And this year it was just like, you know, going to the conventions actually sparked some life back into me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this this had been one of those years where I shut down. I was listening to one of your podcasts earlier with um, one of your friends who was uh, he's in the film. Oh, yeah. 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 So, man, I started taking therapy, you know, and working out, running heavy, you know, just because I, I realized I had to cater to my, my mental health more. You know, because I, I had neglected, you know, expressing those emotions and all that stuff, just being so driven and thinking that was how I needed to be. And for once, I'm just like, OK, you know what? There is, you know, I should be looking forward to being happy because I hadn't really catered to that. It's just business. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's... um that's probably what happened to me is I, I pushed really, really hard for like three years straight. And I just, I, I got burnt out between a couple of things and you, you block, I feel like in order to run the business, like you, you kind of block a lot of things out, like you said, and like you put everything into making it happen. And I've, I've neglected other areas of my life. And because of that, it, you're, you just, you don't function as well. And that's why I, I feel right. like I, I've switched the, I don't think I've switched the direction of the podcast, but I've, I've looked to delve into other areas. Now it's great to get all this business knowledge from folks. And I, I think it's really important. But what I started realizing was there's a lot of fat, lazy installers. Not that we don't work hard when we're on the floor, but the minute we get home, we're like, I've done everything. Like, uh, I'm just like, I'm going to sit here for the next eight hours and do yep. nothing. And then I'm going to go to sleep. I'll get up. I'll do it again. I'm too sore to want to work out. But like I've put on a significant amount of weight and I'm not happy about it. My mental health is affected because of how I'm ignoring other issues in my life. And if we're, if you're not firing on all cylinders and you don't have that emotional, mental and, and physical health working for you, then how can you actually become a successful business man or woman? And, and that's, what I realized and why I started delving into some of this stuff when I saw my buddy Zach post that like, Hey, sorry. Like I, I went off the grid and no one seen me. Like I was like, Whoa, like that's okay. We got to talk about this. Cause I, I think it's important. I think there's a lot of us that just by, you know, even if we're talking with each other, we've got to express it to somebody and, and get it out right. there. Um, how is you've had a couple of things happen lately that I won't, I don't want to dive into that, but is that that's obviously making this year a little bit harder, but are you in a place to where like the, the exercise routine and stuff you've, you've put in it, that's helping navigate these waters better or is that, is it like that's completely stressing you out and, and really, shutting you down so so i've been um you know in therapy realizing that you know i haven't been replacing that anger and burnt out energy with any happiness mm -hmm. and um i just been going and then the minute i'm ready to go again you know finish working out and i want to go running it's like it just just doesn't stop. Like, you know, the minute I get a burst of energy, it's just like, okay, let me burn this out again because whatever emotions I'm dealing with, I haven't really been dealing with just been mm. crunching them. Just kind of covering them up, hiding them, putting them aside, dealing with everything else first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I but to <laughs> answer, I say with, with everything together, like working on it, it's been helpful, you know, like, um, like just right before the podcast, customers call on my phone. You know, I, I, this year has been the first year I actually just, I can't take a phone call after five thirty, six o'clock. Good job. And sometimes I do, but you know, 
it's, it's just, you know, 11 o'clock phone calls. It's, it's just like, all right, this year I just had enough of it. It's mm-hmm. one of those. No, I, that's I man, I I get it. I, I I'm I'm in that exact same boat with you. Like <laughs> after March, when I like I lost it, and I was just like, I'm done. I want to quit. Like I literally, I I was considering shutting everything down and just moving on because I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not enjoyable. But like since then, like I haven't been advertising as much. People will call, and I'm like, I don't know this number. <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna ignore it. I'll I'll wait for a message and and call back later. Yeah, but it, it's worse, been, uh, it's so like it's so relieving uh, that I I feel like I actually have control instead of trying to go twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, and just always being like on. I guess yeah. uh, you know there's. Like it's it's being not like ran you, by the business instead of running the business. Correct. Yeah. Like there's got to be limitations and, and stuff put in place. And it's nice to hear that, you know, I, this is why we talk, right? It is you're, mm-hmm. you and I are experiencing a lot, a lot of the same things, but it's also, if we're doing it, I know there's other people out there that listen to this podcast and they've gone through it or they've experienced it or are experiencing it. And if we can, if this conversation can help them miss that step, and just put limitations in place, man, we've helped the industry so much because right. not, this education isn't, it's so readily available, right? All I did was, you know, mm-hmm. we, we met and I was like, oh, we got to get you on the show. Like, we'll find something to talk about. And you're like, okay. And that's what I found is everybody's generally willing to come on and discuss something. I haven't really had anybody be like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Um, but how many of us don't go ask the question? I get people that are introverted. Like I, this is a very mm-hmm. extroverted activity and everyone thinks that I'm like super outgoing. But if you put me like it, you, we could go to surfaces, man, I'll walk around that whole show and not talk to anybody except people <laughs> I know, like as I walk around the show, because it's overwhelming to me. But if somebody comes up to me and they're like, Hey, I recognize you. Like I can turn on that extroverted right, thing. Right. And so it's a it's an interesting dichotomy, but it, it's we've got to get people to recognize it and go and be willing to just ask the guy, man. If you see a successful, I've said it before on the podcast, like if you see somebody in your neighborhood that's running a successful bakery or something, just go in and say, "Hey, man, can we sit down? Can we set up a a, a time to go get coffee or something? I'd love to chat about your business. I don't care if they're selling coffee, they're the electrician." They're doing a, mm-hmm. a landscaping business like, I, you know, they're running a yoga studio. I don't care what they're doing. There's something right. about what they're doing that you can emulate and it's going to help you. And that's right. That's the beauty of this is that it gets us those conversations so much faster. I understood subcontracting by learning about the music industry. Oh, okay. Go <laughs> now. I got now. You got to explain more than that. So you know, um, so at first, you know, when they're talking about uh, you're a sub, you know, you know, when I'm first getting hip to that lingo, I was like, you know, I'll learn a little bit about the music industry. You know how an artist is owned by a record label, mm-hmm. and you know, I was like, oh, this is the same thing. So that's how I, I grasped that concept, and. Um, I started learning a little bit about the music industry and in order how to um, use some of those same things into the flooring industry. What What are you stealing from them? You, you, you keep stopping. What you got to tell me more? I mean, what are you doing? You, you, you have to like okay. So even when it takes like um, what was this surfaces? You know, mm-hmm. you start looking at the different the 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 business models that they have in order to recreate or regenerate something that happened and um, <clears throat> what, what triggered more money to come in during those times. So I start looking at the same things in the flooring industry and like, okay, well, let's look at it in the flooring aspect. What was happening during this year that triggered money to start circulating and what, what was the main things and what was all these different companies doing around those times that 
and what was the conversations that was happening. So when I started looking up like all these guys in the Hall of Fame, um, reading them on the WFCA, I started realizing some <clears throat> just just looking at different patterns, the different things that was going on, just getting to, like you said, um, getting to know everybody's story. And you'll start noticing some common things in some of those stories. And I wouldn't have got that insight if it wasn't for me looking into a different industry. Got it. Yeah, I think there's like, you know, like like I said, right, you can learn so much from from somewhere else. And then to go and find the people in your industry that are the leaders and looking to the WFCA and, and CFI and NTCA, NWFA, all, all these, you know, uh, CTF, like um, all, all of these places, you're going to find people that are participating at a at a high level. It's I find it very mm -hmm. rare that someone that's a leader in their business isn't involved in some kind of organization within that industry. And so right. it's, they're sharing themselves, they're finding other people to share themselves with. And I think that's, that's a key. Like it's, you have to get involved if, if you know, there's all these people you, you go on the, on the groups <clears throat> online, right? And I've been doing it 30 years and I don't need to go get training and I don't need to go to the, the rep and, and learn about the new product. And I don't need to go to surfaces or CFI convention. Like I don't need to go interact with these people. I've every time I go, I'm walking away with something amazing. It, it from the experience right. alone, like you said, you got you went to you were able to go to surfaces this year and get recharged. And I needed that exact same thing. I needed to interact with my friends that live all over the country and are super dorks like me about all this stuff. And I came back and I felt a lot better than I had in, in three months since March. And then right, right. the the conversations I'm able to have, the people I'm able to meet, it, it builds your business in ways that you don't see it coming. Um, right. It, it's the, just the, you know, you can, you can walk around the showroom floor, you can talk to all the manufacturers and you can, you can get the info on the new flooring or whatever products coming out. That's cool. But when you, when you go to the after parties and you're hanging out back in the hotel lobbies at the bars at night, and you, you see that guy wandering through that you're like, oh, man, I've seen him online forever. Like, I got to go talk to him. You can pull yep. him aside and buy him a drink and, and just hear his story. And that's another part of the show that I like is these are the conversations that are going to happen at the bar. And, and you everyone gets to kind of sit in and, and listen to those conversations and they happen year round. But I want to encourage you like this. This is only one. Go create your your own you've got to get out and and meet those leaders in your industry in your area um i've started the i started an arizona flooring installers group on facebook i've started putting together monthly <clears throat> meetups so today's tuesday we're september 21st so on thursday the 23rd we have our third monthly meetup i've been getting like the same like six to eight people to come but those six to eight people weren't getting together once a month before that. What's that right. gonna What's that gonna do for our local industry? And how can we continue to get more people coming? And that's those are the grassroots movements that are really gonna make a difference, in my opinion. Right. As long as you stay consistent, and eventually more people, different people, will show up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, are you guys? you come out to the events, but you, you've got your family employed. So are you going to start making any of them come out and get them more involved and, and more excited about this stuff? Yeah. I, they all came out to uh, the CFI convention because they're okay. all CFI members. So um, I had them all come out too. And uh, you know, they, they needed that recharge also. And it was mm -hmm. a great experience for them as well. Okay. Yeah. You're you going to have them come out in January or no? February, February. Yep. Yep. They'll be there in February. Okay. Yeah. I have one of them looking to, uh, get in the carpet. He's looking to change his, um, path a little bit and, um, he's looking forward to competing one day. So, okay. Well, you got to send him to, yeah. you got to get him doing carpet and then you send him to PJ. 
Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I heard your um, <laughs> podcast with Arthur also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got to get yeah. him hooked up doing the good stuff, man. You you can't make, you got to go do the high-end goods. Yeah, yeah. So he's looking forward to all of that. So all, okay. all of them, you know. And, and how is yeah. how has that stuff changed your your career path? Right, like there's no <laughs> <laughs> there's no conventions for like back alley dice games and poker games. So <laughs> how how has that come into play for you? What have what have how did you get involved in even starting to go to like CFI convention and, and surfaces and and how has that kind of helped push you forward? So um, the company I was installing for. I, I started, um, like I said, <clears throat> every once in a blue moon, I'm going to Google some companies and look up their background and all that thing. And um, I realized I looked up some of their partnerships that they had, and it was just like, okay, well, once I looked up CFI, I said, okay, well, I need to be a CFI member also. So anything that they had, you know, EPA certified, you know, I need, I felt like I needed to have also. We got a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh i guess i gotta lock the door next time um all right so i you, you got involved I, and it's i mean it's i'm assuming it's it's pushed you forward i sorry she came in and interrupted my train of thought i, I didn't <laughs> cool. hear what you said man um but I'm, I'm assuming it started pushing you forward and, and elevating your game getting you around people that are more successful and you can really see where they're going and how they got there. And it gets those conversations going. Right. Right. You know, it's funny. My first uh, CFI class, I fell. Well, <laughs> yeah, I didn't pass because I didn't show up to class. I, I got, a uh, I got too wasted the night before. Oh. And I, I, I end up missing the glue down portion. And, um, <clears throat> Dave was like, he might pass me, he might not if I do good in class. Did good in class, but I just missed that portion. At the end, he was like, nah, I couldn't pass you. But if you uh, do a glue down portion, then, you know, in, in Orlando, in a couple weeks, they said they was going to have it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I didn't have the availability to show, show back up out there and do the glue down portion. So... I want to say maybe a year or two later, I ran into Dave at um, in Texas at the NWFA Expo. And I said, hey, Dave, I just passed the glue down portion at the NWFA. Will you pass me? <laughs> and he says, uh, let's talk later. So um, eventually um, he told me to give him a call when I got back home and when I called him. He said, hey, I'll pass you if you uh, come to our convention, which was in a couple weeks. I had to double back <laughs> out there to Texas. <laughs> so, OK, yeah, I, that was my um, getting certified story. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's good. So how long did it actually take you to get that first cert then? <laughs> oh, man, it probably took about two and a half years, two years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. All right. Um, is there, we're, we're kind of, we're hitting that, we're, we're hitting that point. Um, is there something okay. that I, I didn't ask that I, I should have asked? Is there something that we, we need to know that uh, maybe I didn't hit on? No, man, I think this is perfect. And um, if we didn't hit on something, it, we'll catch it the next time. Yeah, I, I love it. All right. So, where can uh how do people find you where can they they reach you if you want to give out your phone number instagram like you know do it up what's your what's your website all that fun stuff uh website mr uh facebook marquise wright that's m-a-r-q-u-i-s-w-r-i-g-h-t um instagram m-w-f don d-o-n-n um the don comes from my middle name so if y'all wonder but you know mr right Yep. Okay. Awesome. Uh, you know, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your insights. I, I thank you for, for talking with us and, uh, going over a little bit of your story. So Thanks, that's, Kyle. uh, no, thank you. You, it, you guys, my guests make this happen, man. I'm just, <laughs> I just ask questions. So I, you know, I appreciate it more than anything. Um, and, uh, we'll see how this one turned out because I'm a little, I'm a little worried after the, with the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We, it's it's a whole, worry, whole it's new theme. setup, man. We 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 jumped out of. Let's see if there was only a phone. So what? The TVs. The TV was like 1950s invention or so, right around there, right? So you know, I, I immediately jumped out of just doing audio communication into like live streaming on the internet. So. This oh, yeah. was, uh, this was interesting. First one like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your patience, man. It didn't work the other day. I bought some more equipment, figured some stuff out. Uh, I still don't know how I did it because I was pretty sure I had had the settings that I currently have on the computer, and now all of a sudden it works. So I'm not going to complain. Everyone said they could hear you on Facebook. So uh, cool. Yeah. I, I think we're we're golden. Um that's all the time we have for this week. Thank you for listening to the Floor Academy podcast. Make sure to look for our business budget worksheet. Uh, you can find that at FloorAcademyPod.com under the files section. You can also check out our merch over there. There's also a link to our Patreon where you can help support the show. If you have questions or feedback, Email us at FloorAcademyPodcast at gmail.com. Flooring Domain is an award-winning online flooring directory and service marketplace that helps you find more customers, grow your online presence and reputation, or your brand. Whether you are a carpet store or flooring installer, perhaps a tile contractor, there are jobs for everyone with a daily stream of customers visiting Flooring Domain and looking for experts like you. Flooring Domain offers a free listing option that allows you to find new customer leads. You can set up a free account at Flooring Domain by visiting flooringdomain.us. Have you ever tried to install LVP on steps only to struggle with a solution for the stair nose? Introducing Snap Caps by Snap Tech. You simply send Snap Tech, Snap Tech the exact LVP your customer selects, and they'll turn it into a perfectly matched stair nose that clicks flush into the tread plank for a simple and reliable solution. Visit www.snaptech.biz to learn more or order. Marquis, thanks again, and uh, we will we will do it again, buddy. I appreciate it. All right, man. Yes, sir.